How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Big Day Dave and this is a map tour for a new mod map to Farming Simulator 22 called Deadwood. And before we get going with the description, I want to kind of put a proviso in this video before we get too deep into this. I highly, highly, highly recommend that if you're going to play on this map that you have the premium and platinum expansions for Farming Simulator 22. They are very important in this particular map and I will show that kind of more later on in the video but highly recommend those uh, expansions so that being said let's go ahead and read the description welcome to Deadwood South Dakota Deadwood is a fictional place but offers things you may find around the real town of Deadwood map offers a lot to do from farming logging stone and productions there is no starting farm. You start with equipment and a place to park it. Many cell points. Windmill cell point is a cell all point that Schultz modding, or thanks to Schultz modding. New and reworked productions, 100 collectibles, custom sounds, custom animal pens, cow not sellable. Most all production and cell points can be deleted. Town set up for yard and garden work. The smaller fields are for role play. Plow your neighbor's garden. Fields do not need rolled. Ain't no one got time for that. And much more. This map was created by Poor Boy and Bruce's Gaming and is 556.37 megabytes to download. There are no mods required to, for this map. And the map looks like this. We start out here on the western portion of the map, just by the uh, by the shop triggers here. We start out by owning farmlands. Oops, farmlands number 34, 20, and 58. 34 being it's not your starting farm, but it's where you have access for all your pens and pastures that are built into the map. 20 being a grass field that is ready to harvest, and 58 being a cornfield ready for harvest. Values of the prices do vary. We'll start out kind of small here. We got 76,000, 60,000, a little bit bigger at 229, 197, 207, and 238. A little bit bigger with 549,000. Got uh, this little one right here, 137, but then we have the entire northern portion, which is for the most part forestry or mining. So 168,000, 200,000, 241, 187, half the mine for 159,000, which is really cheap. And when we get there, you'll see why I say that. And 149,000. So all in, you're talking just a little over 300,000 for the entire mine. And that's a, that's a steal in my opinion. Let's see. Whoops. You do start out with animal pens, as I mentioned before. And that's really all you have in regards to kind of buildings and stuff. Uh, contracts are available on this map. You do start out with several productions. And again, we're going to be going into a lot of detail when, in regards to the productions. Because it's a lot to take in so gonna be a lot to review and there are collectibles 100 to be precise if we take a look at mods specific for this map starting out at the buy menu scrolling down to the mods and dlcs you'll see i do have the platinum and premium expansions both set up for this tour normally i don't have any mods on the map but here we do have Deadwood as one of our tiles, and we have several mods specific to this map kind of built in to the buy menu. Quite a few, as a matter of fact. If we take a look at mods on the buy menu, though, I'm sorry, the build menu, we were on the buy menu. Let me spin that. There we go. Under sheds, we have, we scroll over to the right, uh, there's the premium. All the way here to the right, we got Piney Run Lodge Exports. For one dollar under silos we have the bale and pallet storage there nothing under silo extensions but under containers you do have the buying station nothing under tools but under farmhouses we scroll to the right you will see the chair sleep trigger next under productions if we scroll over to the right you will see eventually a whole bunch of dead wood production points 
And again, these are going to come in very much detail later. Uh, let's see. Selling points. We have the sell all. A couple here, actually. Nothing under greenhouses, orchards, or generators. Under animals, we have nothing under cows, nothing under horses. But under pigs, you will see deadwood as a pigsty here. And this does take modified uh, inputs. So you can see the sweet feed is there to the right. We've got what appears to be corn straw and a couple other things here for pigs. Under sheep, it'll take, again, sweet feed and all that. We've got under chickens right here. Again, sweet feed and potatoes. So these have been modified in order to take on the different feeds, but you do have the mod specific to the map for Deadwood. Nothing for bees or others. Uh, let's see, under decorations, we have nothing under the entire tab of decorations and under landscaping. Nothing under painting, nothing under trees, but under plants. We scroll to the right, you'll see prairie grass for Deadwood map. Now, we start out here at the main shop area. Right here, we have our shop trigger. On our way by, we're going to open this gate here because we're going to need that truck that's hidden in there. And back here, repair trigger. All right, now before I get going, I'm going to go ahead and cut out for just a second so I can add in a whole bunch of money. We're going to need a ton of it because I'm going to be buying a ton of production points before we get going. So I will cut it out here and cut us back in as soon as I have the money. We'll see you in a bit. And there we go. $12 million should be enough to cover it. We shall see, though. Let's go ahead and disconnect, turn on the truck, and start heading out. So first, we leave the shop area, making a left. Now, first one we have here to my left is the restaurant sell point. Can I... Uh, I was hoping I could turn off the Jake brake, but I cannot. That's alright. Now, continuing down the road, we're going to be hitting our first production point, which is coming up here to my right. We come around the backside over here. You'll see this is the root crop processing. Now, right off the bat, this is why I was saying at the beginning that you need to have the premium or and the platinum expansions. There's there's a reason why, and this is about to show you. So we'll go ahead and buy this. Now you can see if we were to have the or, or if we didn't have the premium and platinum expansions. All this stuff would be missing. So the soup, beetroot, carrots, parsnips, that, that's understandable. But the problem is, is that anywhere where there's a non-premium expansion that's available. So like the potato chips, you'll see a recipe here, but with no output. So you see potatoes, oil, and that's it. It won't give you anything. So the only thing that will actually have a full recipe is sugar where you put in sugar beets and get out sugar but the problem is is that you also need the carton roll for this particular one as well so it's an incomplete production so if you buy this without the premium and platinum expansions you're not getting the full recipes so yes you get a whole bunch of stuff for this one you get the soup beetroot carrots parsnips potatoes the preserves beetroots carrots parsnips potato chips, three different recipes, including one with corn oil, and that'll show how to produce corn oil later. And then you have the sugar here as well, and again, needing the carton roll. You come around the backside here, output here, and input there. Continuing down, you see the next building there that is a cell point that is the fast food restaurant just tucked away behind the diner sign there. Over here we have the grocery mart cell point. Again coming up here is another example of the kind of missing products if you do not have the premium, uh, premium and platinum expansions. 
right here you have the garbage productions now you own this one right off the bat but you see barrels buckets bathtubs armoires chairs tables floor tiles all these things every single one of these is either from the platinum or premium expansion this whole thing if you don't have any of the uh premium or platinum expansions activated this all comes back as blank there is literally nothing here because everything here is from the premium or the platinum expansions and everything you put out all this stuff you put in you get out trash cans and garbage containers now unfortunately i did not find an area where it would show the output but the input is tucked around the back side right over here so my guess is output is somewhere in the front here that's just a guess though So now heading to the next point of interest, after clobbering the sign. Next one we have is the biomass heating plant. This is a cell point with a wood cell trigger right there. Next one we have is right here. This is the charcoal and pellet productions 125,000 I don't think I showed how much the original one was the root crop processing is $70,000 but going back to this one 125,000 to purchase this go ahead and purchase that and you'll see to make charcoal again you need to have the premium and platinum expansions because these are incomplete recipes if you don't have them you have coal bark and carton rolls to make charcoal and then another one here you have charcoal uh, sawdust and paper roll and you have pioneer pellets you got the output here input back here continuing down the road we're now at the grain mill. Now we are going to purchase this one because there's a little bit of uh, additions to this one. 96,000 to purchase this. And you'll see here, wheat paper roll. We got barley paper roll. All these additions of paper rolls, but we also can make corn flour, canola flour, sunflower flour, and soybean flour. So you have all these additional inputs that you can put in to get your flour. So this isn't just a kind of straightforward grain mill. Inputs here, outputs there. Going just a little bit further down the street, over here is the cereal factory. $110,000 to purchase this and inputs and outputs. I don't think there was anything different about this one. Let me confirm. Nope, nothing. Uh, mm, I think strawberries is a different input. I think this is a different recipe, so not the standard recipe that we would see here. I'm glad I purchased that because I'm pretty sure that's not standard. Going over to the next set. Here we have the spinnery, 60,000 to purchase. And again, I don't think, nope, standard recipes there. And we have input and output right there. Across the street, we have the bakery. You can purchase this for $50,000. Whoops, and again, we do want to purchase that because again, uh, mm, actually I think this one is standard. Yeah, I think that one is standard. Output here and input over here. Now going to the last set of interest in this area. Coming up to my left is the dairy. You can purchase this for 70000 And again, just standard butter, cheese, and chocolate. No surprises to be found here. Output here and input over here. Now we head back in a circle going around the town here. And now we head 
a little ways down the road. Oh, you know what? I don't think I showed... I think I completely passed by the train rent trigger. Back here, uh, before we went to the garbage processing, rent train trigger, right there along the tracks. I think I just completely skipped right over that. Now, coming up here on the left, you'll see that disc starting to pop up right next to the train is a huge, huge train. That is another train rent trigger right there, just before the bridge. Now, coming up here, make a right. Now, before I get uh, showing this off, let me go ahead and show where we've been and what we've seen. So, we started up here at the shop. We went out and around to the restaurant continue down south where we saw the root crop processing the fast food restaurant rent train trigger was where we were supposed to see but i just double back to that uh then we saw the garage or garbage production came back out passed by the grocery mart the biomass heating plant the charcoal and pellet productions up to the grain mill then the cereal factory then the spinnery then the bakery then the dairy came back looped back around Saw the rent train trigger there, and now we are here on the map. Now, over to my left, we have the grain dryer for 100000 Purchase this. Let's go ahead and purchase that, and you'll see we can make dry corn, dry beans. Those are the two things that we can put, uh, that we can get out. To get those, you need to put corn and propane in, and you get the dry corn and compost out. Same thing with dry beans. You put soybeans in and propane in, and you get the dry beans and compost out. Input here and output over here. Across the street, we have a gas station. Over here, we have the... Uh, oh, you know what? I missed one. Gas station in the front and gas station gas station sales in the back. And over here we have the supermarket sell point. Coming down here, we have our next point of interest. This is the recycling center 150,000 purchase this and you can this one is kind of odd to me i don't necessarily understand this one so the recycling center you can make corn junk cars i, I don't get it i don't get it but corn in and you get junk dozer junk car junk loader junk tank junk train and you get a waste oil as a byproduct I don't understand why. Slag is an input, and you get all those same things out. You get trash cans as an input, and garbage containers as an input. So I'm, I, I just, I don't get it. I don't understand these outputs. Specifically, I'm getting hung up on the corn. The slag, trash cans, and garbage containers make a little bit more sense, but I don't understand the corn. Anyways, we have an output here and an input here. And we also have an output here. Now one thing you're going to have to be careful on this map is making sure that you're driving not tired. Because a lot of bridges are on this map that do not have rails on them. So you can very easily fall into the rivers or, the, or fall off the uh, fall off the map. Basically, <laughs> it's not going to be pretty for nobody. Right here, we have the windmill sell all sell point with a wood sell trigger right there. Across the street, we have the oil mill for one hundred fifty thousand. You can purchase this. We'll go ahead and do that. Where you can make sunflower oil, canola oil, olive oil, corn oil, lavender oil. And again, you get all these 
as inputs and outputs, but you also have a waste oil as an output as well. So you get two production points with the with that waste oil. And whoops, almost forgot. Input here and output here. So go back to the truck. Continue heading down the street to the biogas plant there to my left. Now to activate the biogas plant, you have to purchase the land. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the map. We were here. We went and saw the corn dryer, the gas station, the gas station sale cell point, the supermarket cell point. We came over to the recycling center, came up to the windmill sale all, and then across the street to the oil mill. And now we are here at farmland number 40. Purchase this for 69152 Go ahead and do that, and you'll see the trigger comes up, and all of these come up as well. If you come over here, this is not your stereotypical biogas plant. Be prepared. We have grass as an input, and look at all those outputs. You get electricity, methane, digestate, diesel, and I believe that's diesel exhaust fluid as well. You get potatoes as an input. You get silage. You get slurry, manure, sugar beet cut. We have canola, so, uh, sunflowers, corn, and you're also getting the propane in some of these as well. So corn, you're getting propane instead of methane. Uh, this one, you're also getting kerosene as well for wood chips. You also have coal as an input where you're getting the propane, diesel, and kerosene as an output. Get crude oil, used oil, which is the waste oil. I mean, yeah, this is a huge biogas plant. Lots of moving parts here. We have solids inputs here, liquid inputs here, and liquid outputs over here. Now, I think that there's also a liquid inputs over here, but I don't think there's a distinction between which ones are uh, accepting which products. Actually, no, I'm sorry. That's an output. That's an output symbol. So, yeah, two separate outputs. So maybe there's two different places to get the outputs. Now we continue to head down the street. Beautiful waterfall in the background. We got the pizzeria cell point up here in front of us and to my left now. Continuing down the road. To my left, that is the animal dealer cell station cell point. And then, tucked away over here. Now this is your grass field. And look at this grass. This grass is ridiculously tall. This is uh, crop type prairie tall. So yeah, <laughs> that is a very tall grass to cut. Here is the animal dealer. Now, if you have pen and pastures, which you do start out with pen and pastures on these uh, easy mode that you can go into, you can come to this location and use this icon, or you can use the same icon at your pen and pastures to purchase your animals. If you do this, though, you will incur an additional fee. That fee is associated to a delivery fee. Now, that fee... Uh, can be pretty expensive, especially depending on what animals you're getting and how many you are getting. Adult cows cost $100 per cow, and you'll see later the number of cows that you can have on this map is a lot. So <laughs> it adds up very quickly. If you want to save that money, bring an animal trailer to this location, whether it's leased or owned, it doesn't matter. Bring it to this location and then load your animals using this icon directly into the animal trailer and deliver the animals yourself. That'll save you a ton of money, especially on this map. You're going to find out just how much here very soon. So now, let them give us a little bump. Heading 
past the waterfall. We have the farmer's market tucked around back here. That is a sell point. And now over here, you'll see the kind of starting farm, quote unquote. It's not a starting farm because you don't have a actual sleep trigger. It's not a farm per se. It's where your animals are all stored. But because this is the closest thing that we have here to a starting farm, let's go ahead and take a look at the starting equipment. So we go under the buy menu under owned items. We have small tractors, the Case Maxim CVX145 and the Farm Farmall 1066. Under large tractors, we have the Case Steiger Wield 620 and the Magnum 400 Power Drive. Under trucks, we have the Mac Pinnacle MP8505 tuned. Under harvesters, we have a Case Axle Float 9250. Cars, we have the Mahindra Retriever. Trailers, we have the Wilson Trailer Pace Setter Edit and the Rudolph TDK 301 RP. Auger wagons, we have the Demco 2200 Dual Auger Grain Cart. Under headers, we have the Case 3162 Terraflex Draper 45 foot. Corn headers, the Case 4418N. Disc arrows, the Case Speed Tiller 475. Under planters, the Kinsey 4905 Blue Drive. Slurry tanks, the Farm Tech Super Seas 800. Mowers, the K brand GMD 4411. Balers, the Case. LB 436 HD and the K brand VB 3190. Front loaders, we have the Quickie Q6M and front loader tools, we have the Albut front loader bucket edited and the round bale fork. And that is all the starting equipment. Now over here we have the cow pasture. You have room for a thousand cows. That's why I said this map is going to add up if you have them all delivered. Again, a hundred uh, hundred dollars per uh blah, blah, blah. hundred dollars per adult cow as you can see here and 60 cows six thousand dollars you extrapolate that out to a thousand cows that's a lot of money a lot of money so thousand car cows storage and you have your milk output here this is a what's supposed to be a milk holding tank uh normally that's a i believe liquid fertilizer tank but they're using this in place of a milk tank. Over here, we have a bale and pallet storage room for... Uh, why is it coming up? Huh. Normally, it comes up with a amount. Anyways, over here, we have the pig barn. Oh, you know what? I forgot to show. Forgot to show the inputs for the cows. So tucked away inside the pen here we do have a feed input right there and did this require water let me double check that uh no no water for this pasture normally pastures require water this one is not the case over here like i said we have the pig barn we have the slurry output here Feed input here and room for 500 pigs. Over here, we have the feed production. Again, this is one where it's going to have a bunch of different stuff to it. Starting with the silage, you can make from grass and make it into silage with compost as a byproduct. You also have silage alfalfa, um, which for some reason showing grass as well this might need an update because i believe there is alfalfa on this map yes yeah so i think that's going to need to be updated i don't think that's actually accurate because it has an input of grass not alfalfa uh you have cow feed that you can make from hay soybeans and sunflowers and you get the tmr and a byproduct of compost pig feed you got hay Two different versions of hay. Again, alfalfa hay, which, again, should be something different, but it's not. Uh, here we can make sweet feed, and we've got four different recipes of sweet feed. You can take corn straw, 
uh, sugar cane and oats and make your feed and have a byproduct. Uh, you have another one here for uh, straw, sugar, and oats. You have straw, honey, and oats, and corn straw, honey, and oats. So here you have an input and on the back side an output. Over here we have the chicken barn. Room for 360 chickens and input here and output right here. And then just over here we'll jump over the sheep barn. Room for 500 sheep. Input here and output right here. Let's go ahead and go hop back in the truck and we can go ahead and leave from here. So cutting through the quote-unquote farm. Follow this road out. Go up the mountainside here. our next point of interest. This is the sawmill. $250,000 to purchase the sawmill. And here we can make all sorts of stuff. So we have wood planks, wood beams, planks, uh, more planks. So all the various different inputs and outputs that we can get uh, for this and we put in wood coal and propane our, our in various inputs and we get out things like planks wood chips bark sawdust wood beams plank long and dry lumber so over here we have our wood cell trigger here our input for our lumber here we have our outputs right here and here and more inputs and outputs here. So now we head back down the hill to our next point of interest. Again, uh, uh, Coming up here is going to be another reason why I said that it's very, very highly recommended that you have the premium and platinum expansions is this part right here. So this is the carpentry, 150,000 to purchase the carpentry. And you can see, look at all these different things that you can make. And pretty much everything here is from the Platinum expansion. So we got barrels, buckets, bathtubs, armoires, chairs, tables, armoire uh, from planks. Uh, you got different recipes for different uh, inputs and outputs. Um, yeah, it, it's a lot going on here. But also byproduct of sawdust. I mean, all sorts of stuff going on here. Now, I believe it's inputs here and all sorts of outputs under the awning here. Like I said, pretty much everything there is a result of the Platinum Expansion DLC, so without it, a whole bunch of stuff is not going to come up for that one. Now we're here down the road. At the smelter, 110,000 to purchase. And you can see we have metal as an output. We got drum barrels, we got nails, gold bars, pipes, another version of metal. And then all. Basically, we can make <laughs> all this stuff uh, from our recipes. So we've got, what is that? That looks to be potentially 
Um, it's one of the junk, I think this might be junk cars, then junk dozer, junk tank, junk loader, junk train. And then you get all those as outputs. So you get nails, you get, uh, let's see, metal, and then pipes. Um, you get slag, you get drum barrels. So all sorts of different inputs, uh, different outputs for those inputs. And also coal is another input as well. Uh, let's see, we've got inputs here and outputs are all tucked underneath here. A little further down the road, we have the cement and asphalt plant. You have 250000 to purchase this. Let's go ahead and do that. And we can do cement from all those various inputs. We've got sand, lime, stone powder, diesel, and gravel, and asphalt with your, uh, looks like gravel, sand, and diesel. So we got input here, output here, output here. I think that's an output right here as well, looks like. Yep, there we go. Continuing down the road. Leave the truck right here on the main road. So our first stop is right here. This is the plywood productions, 175,000 to purchase this and you can make plywood from wood chips. Straight, easy, simple, no problem. Output here and input, was it around back? Right there. Over here, we have a set of beehives with the spawn point for honey right there. Rent train trigger. And here we have the gold production, 135 to purchase this, 135,000. And you have water, pater, and coal as your inputs, gold as an output. Output here, input here. And here we have the debris crusher cell point. So now heading back to the truck. Gotta do a little bit of driving. And coming up on our left is our next production point. Whoops. Right here. Outputs and inputs here. And this is the paper and cardboard plant. 145,000 to purchase. And we got wood chips in and paper rolls and carton rolls out. And here, before we move on, let me go ahead and show where we've been and what we've seen up to this point. So we were here, left off at the biogas plant. We came up, passed by the pizzeria, came over to the animal dealer cell station, cell point. The animal dealer backtracked across the bridge to the farmer's market. We then saw the main farm where we saw the cow barn, the bale and pallet storage, the pig barn, the feed production, chicken barn, the sheep barn, came out and about to this area here, which is a sawmill, came back down the main road to the carpentry, then down to the smelter, over to the cement and asphalt, asphalt factory, and came up to the plywood productions. We passed by the beehives, the rent train trigger, the gold production, and the debris crusher. We then came back out to here at the paper and cardboard plant. Now we need to double back over our footprint one more time and head back towards the quote-unquote non-starting starting farm. Pass 
pass by all the stuff we've seen before, the biogas plant, the silage clamp right there. Now coming up here, we make a right. And now we start to climb. So we just continue to follow the mountain road way out and about. Being careful that we don't fly off the cliff because that is certainly a possibility. Up here at the split, we're going to make a left. And that's why you want to be careful. <laughs> this truck without a trailer on it gets a little floaty. Right here, we have the crude oil production. Can purchase this for $250,000. And we have crude oil as an output. We can put water in and get crude oil out. So 500 in to 100 out. Or we can put in sand, pipes, and water, and we get a reduced amount of uh, loss. So here you get, what, 175 product in and 100 out versus 500 in and 100 out. So 5 to 1 reduction versus a almost 2 to 1 reduction. Inputs here, outputs there. Now we need to turn around. Follow this all the way out to this area back here, which this area is very unique. I've never seen anything like this before. Not this here. This is the firewood production. For 5000 you can purchase this and put wood in, get firewood out inputs uh no outputs here input here with a wood cell trigger right here now what's unique is this area way up here if we see that little blue dot on the bottom left hand screen uh portion of the map there that little blue dot is a cell point that's why we're walking out to it now you can try and get back here with vehicles I don't know how you're going to do it without clearing out a whole bunch of, of area first. But this is the Cabin View Cell Station. Now, this is actually a very nice cell point. And the reason being is that it's a very elevated price. Wherever you see products that can be bought from this cell point, it's much higher than most other areas. Uh, let me see if I can find one. I think eggs is one of them. No. There we go. Diesel. Look at the sell price for diesel everywhere else. It's about $3,000. Cabin View Cell Station, $7,400. It is more than double every place else. If you buy diesel at $1,250 per thousand liters, you can sell it for, what is that? Um, one, two, three, four, almost five times the amount that you bought it for. Like that's ridiculous, but you gotta be able to get it up here. That's the problem. And you can see, if I zoom out, there's no roads. There's literally nothing. So you're gonna have to either clear a path, clear out a way to get out to here. So it's going to take some doing, but when you do it, it's going to be worth it. 
So now let's run back to the truck there and go check out the next point of interest. Truck should be just ahead of me here. There it is. Again, you can see what I was talking about with the bridges on this map. Do not have any safety features. So now we have to backtrack a ways in order to get to the next point of interest. Head down here. And then we'll follow this part way down the mountainside. Coming up here at the split, we're going to want to make a left. Then we follow this out to our next point of interest. Cross the river here. That is the uh, waterfall right there. Coming up here, now to my right, is the next point of interest. Stop right here. This is the Crusher production point. Purchase this for $500,000. $500. And here you can get a whole bunch of stuff. So stones, diesel, and water in get you all these products out. Look at this. Coal, lime, limestone, dirt, gravel, sand, iron ore, pay dirt, and stone powder. All those outputs from just one input. Output here and input. Climb up the side of the hill, I believe, is right here. Now, the reason I say I believe is because there is no sign that indicates it, but this would be the, the kind of logical input for the production point. Uh, I did not test it to see if it worked. I hope it does. And now we're heading to the mine. You see it right here in front of me. And this is what I was saying earlier about this is a very lucrative property, considering it's right here next to that crusher. Look at all this stone. All this is just lined with stone, but the next point of interest and the last point of interest is going to be the kind of icing on the cake. Right here is a stone buy point, but the problem is, quote unquote problem, you get free stones. Now, you kind of have to uh, come out here and figure out a way to get out here. And the problem is, is that there's a little bit of a steep kind of slope here. So getting a trailer out here and getting it back onto this path without doing any clearing is going to be extremely difficult because the trigger is about right here. Even though the trigger is right there in front of me, the symbol, it's actually more back here. And you have to be, or at least in my testing, had to be back here off the road. I wasn't getting the trigger popping up here or anywhere around here. So you're going to have to be in here. So you're going to have to have either two things. You're either going to have to clear out some stone in order to kind of lessen the slope on this, uh, this lip here, or you're going to have to have something with a very high, uh, trailer, uh, like a, a real, real high wheelbase in order to make it up and over the stone lip there to get out. And that is everything. Oh, and that was called the Endless Stone Tower. 
uh, buy point. That is everything for Deadwood. Now we're at the point where I render my opinion, let you know what I think. Zero to five scale as per usual. I am... I really like this map. I really, really like it. I think that this thing has a ton of potential. That being said, I'm also very conflicted about this map as well. The reason being is that there's a lot of areas around the map that just feel that plunk factor. So let me let me tell the things I like about it first. I love the landscape. This kind of northern mountainous area here is just spectacular. And Poor Boy does an amazing job with the kind of mixture of forestry and production and farming. Poor Boy does an amazing job. I know it's not just Poor Boy who made this map as well. It was uh, Bruce's Gaming as well that made this map. They did a fantastic job with that kind of marriage of all the various aspects of Farming Simulator. Now, all that being said, I also like the color palette. I like the terrain. You know, down here in the south portion of the map, it's incredibly flat. It's very... Um, like, you can see pretty much as far as the eye can see when you're down here in the valley! <laughs> and that's what happens when you're not paying attention to the road. Anyways, let's go ahead and grab a different set of equipment, shall we? So, it's... What was I saying? It's one of those where... Normally, I don't care for the flatness on a map, but, whoa, couldn't turn. But this kind of is okay in my opinion because you have the mountainous area in the north to really kind of offset the flatness found here in the south. Uh, I mean, all in all, I really, whoa, whoa, and that's why I don't like the Mahindra. <laughs> that's why we didn't go around in this. But, uh, yeah, one of those where color palette, awesome. Terrain, I love it. The kind of just overall presence and feel on the map, the production points, uh, the waterfall feature, like there's a ton of stuff. Now, some of the things I don't like about this map, when the map maker utilizes the full periphery of the map and they actually put you out like purposely because of cell points or anything like that, on that kind of very outer periphery of the map, the way in which they handle the map itself, the kind of outer periphery, the non-playable area of the map, is very important to me. And the reason that is, is because we come out here and we're doing work out in this field like this, you know, you're going to be right up against the edge of the map. And then you're seeing out into the void. And there's no avoiding it. You cannot not see what's out here. So it just makes it very game breaking, very, um, what's the word? Uh, take, it takes you out of the simulation, takes you out of the gameplay experience. So that one is very kind of rough in my opinion. Uh, when we were up there at the cabin, that's a perfect example of that Northern cell point cabin that has the, ele uh, inflated sales prices. That was extremely noticeable because there was nothing keeping you from seeing out the back and out into the world uh, beyond the map. So it was just one of those where it's very difficult to not see those kind of things and not be uh, sucked out of the kind of immersion that is being built. Now, I mentioned earlier how it kind of feels in areas where it's kind of plunked down. The cell points, the production points, especially here in the town, you can see the area here is just very... There's not a lot going on. You got a grocery store here, and there's not a whole lot here. And it just seems very plunked. Very kind of, here it is, here you go, kind of thing. Again... This one actually is a lot better because you got a little bit more in the ways of decoration around the building. You got all these boxes and pallets and stuff. You got this little trailer out back. I mean, this one kind of feels a bit nicer, a little bit um, 
more lived in. But you go next door to these buildings here, and again, you get these kind of sales buildings, which this is nice. It's a good little, you know, decoration kind of thing. Doesn't serve a purpose other than just being here. This is nice. It's actually a pretty decent area, but this isn't an area you're going to be coming to. Again, the church here. Again, you got the parking lot that kind of makes it, you know, very much kind of draws you in. But every single place where you actually are going to be going to on a very regular basis is just kind of boom. Here it is, you know, the spinnery boom. Here it is. There's nothing to kind of take it away from the fact that these are base game models and only leaves behind the kind of, uh, like I said, that, that kind of just plunked feeling like that. Here it is. Here you go. Kind of thing. I don't know. It's just one of those, like this area here. I really like this because you got all these little micro fields that are behind all these houses and stuff. And you can actually do these as uh, part of, I think these might be available in contracts. I'm not a hundred percent sure now. Uh, yeah, these are part of contracts. I mean, fertilizing $200, uh, 1700, uh, less than $200. I mean, yeah, these are part of the contract. So you can sit there and maintain people's gardens right here. This area is again, this is really nice, but you come right next door again. You got the fire department here. It's just kind of there. I don't know. It just seems like there's just <laughs> seems like there's just areas in which a lot of thought and, and care was put into it, but then others that was just kind of, here you go. And that's not me trying to be mean or anything like that. That's just, it seems like there's some areas that are just far more built up than others. I love the grass, the kind of prairie grass, I think is what it was referred to here. That's really cool. The very nice, tall, overgrown now, what I'd be interested in is finding out if that actually gives you an increased yield. If it gave you a higher yield, that would be really cool. It makes sense, too, because it's really tall, really built up. Um, yeah, I mean, all in all, I, I really do like this map, but there's a lot of things about it that just seems very kind of... There, there's a lot of hits for me and a lot of misses, and... The, all that being said, what would I give this map at the end of the day? Oh, it, oh, you know what? And that's the other thing, too. The fact that you almost are required to have the premium and platinum. You don't have to. It's not your requirement. I shouldn't I shouldn't say it like that. But if you don't have the premium or uh, premium and or the uh, platinum expansions, you are going to be missing out on a ton, a ton of the production point capabilities on this map a ton of them especially the platinum edition the platinum expansion there gives you so much in the ways of the carpentry the sawmill and just various other places too you also get the recycling center the the whole uh production point that you start out with here at the very top what was it called was it the recycling center i think Yeah, the, oh, the garbage production. This one is almost exclusively inputs from the premium and platinum expansions. I mean, almost exclusively. So it's one of those where you're getting all this various inputs. And because if you don't have those activated, that whole production point is useless. It's just there and taking up space. Now, it's I think it's possible that you can actually sell that production point. We can try that real quick. Um, if that's the case, then it's not as devastating of an issue. Yeah, no, this one you can't sell. Yeah, so, yeah, that's unfor- Uh, you know what? Let me try one more thing. I tried clicking on it, but let's see. Yeah, no. So, yeah, you can't sell this one. So, if you don't have the premium or uh, and or the platinum expansions, you get nothing, literally nothing out of this one. And there's some factors that are made here that are used in other things down the line. And if you can't get them from this production point- uh, you can't get them at all. It's one of those kind of a, uh, that, that's kind of a big issue. Uh, and you can't buy them either. So at the end of the day, what do I think of this map? Zero to five rating as per usual. <sighs> There's a lot of really good and a lot of really bad. 
Um, I think I would probably give this a three. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I really, really like this map. There's a lot of things about this that I like. And just because I'm giving it a three doesn't mean that I wish I could give this a much higher rating. I would love to give this a four or even a five. It is, it, it's, it's up there. But right now, just because of all the issues that I mentioned before, and they're not issues, they're more personal hangups. Because of all the things I listed before, I just can't go any higher than the three. So that's how I feel about this map. I hope you enjoyed this up uh, this map tour. If you did, please show him by liking, sharing, subscribing, following, commenting, doing all the things. The algorithm is joy you're doing and shows you're engaged with this channel and join the content. And that being said, I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care.